Hey guys, Roman here from Tech Guides, and in this video, I'm going to show you the best graphical settings for the best performance and visuals in Battlefield 2042. Now, unlike some of the YouTubers, I'm not going to pretend that you can magically boost your performance by setting some settings uh, to any different value than just having all of the graphical settings set to low. This is obviously always going to yield you the highest possible performance in pretty much any game. Now, one setting where this isn't so clear is the FOB as well as NVIDIA Reflex Low Latency, which I'm obviously going to cover later in this video. But just off the get-go, I wanted to mention that if you simply want to get the highest performance or highest FPS in BF2042, then setting every graphical settings to the lowest value will give you just that. However, by doing so, you will miss out on a few important settings that only slightly affect performance but have a huge impact on visual quality. So in this video, I'm going to show you the actual performance impact and side-by-side -side comparisons of each setting to help you select the best trade-off between visual fidelity and performance. The first setting is actually one that you can't even modify in-game, and that is the Weapon DOF. Now, I would highly recommend anyone to disable the Weapon DOF, because whenever you ADS, you see a significant decrease in performance, and if your system is already pretty stressed at that time, this can lead to noticeable stuttering whenever ADSing. Unfortunately, it is not possible to disable the Weapon DOF through the in-game settings, but instead you'll have to modify the configuration file. So in your Explorer, go to Documents, Battlefield 2042, Settings, and open the profsafe underscore profile configuration file in the text editor of your choice. Scroll all the way to the bottom and set the GST render dot weapon DOF to zero. And with that, let's hop into the game and go through each and every setting individually. Starting with full screen mode, you can see that I'm losing a staggering 20% in performance when using borderless instead of full screen. By the way, here's a quick tip on how you can get the game to be actually displayed in proper full screen mode whenever loading up, um, if it's actually loaded up in kind of a smaller screen, regardless of the setting under full screen mode. And the way to force it to go into proper full screen is oddly enough not to click on the extend button and it's also not um, control enter as in pretty much any other game, but instead you'll have to open up any other program like your explorer or a text editor Minimize that program, which then magically makes the game go into proper full screen. For full screen resolution, you'll obviously want to play at the native resolution of your monitor. If you still don't have enough performance, then you should really rather uh, look into using DLSS, which I'll discuss later in this video. By the way, feel free to use the timestamps below to skip to any segment that you're most interested in. Moving on to Field of View, which is actually quite different from pretty much any other game, because in Battlefield 2042, you are setting the vertical field of view instead of the horizontal. Frankly, this is a bit awkward. However, there is a simple tool to translate between a horizontal and a vertical field of view, such that it can use the exact same field of view that you use in any other game. Link to this tool will be in the description below. And the way this works is to first select the correct aspect ratio. If you have a 1080p, a 1440p or a 4K display, this will be 16 by 9. And then you can simply use the slider to translate a horizontal field of view that you're used to into the vertical field of view equivalent. In my case, I usually play at a horizontal FOV of 110, which translates to a vertical field of view of 78. So this is what I'm setting the first person FOV to. And on the other hand, the vehicle third person field of view, you'll probably want to pump up a little bit higher um, because when you're in a vehicle, you obviously want to see more of your surroundings compared to first person. Now, in terms of performance, you can see that an increase in FOV reduces performance as you would expect. However, between a vertical FOV of 60 and 90, uh, there really isn't much of a difference in terms of performance. On the other hand, I wouldn't recommend to go beyond 90 because of the drastic FPS penalty that I observed regardless of the graphical preset. Another cool thing that this graph gives away is that I'm losing roughly 30% performance when going from low to ultra. And therefore, I would really recommend to go through this video and watch until the end so that you can also get my recommended settings that yield me extremely nice performance and basically ultra quality. Finally, you'll absolutely want to enable the ADS field of view setting. This will instantly make you a better player, because basically what this does is if you have it disabled, then if you ADS, you'll zoom in quite a significant amount, which basically makes recon control much harder. 
On the other hand, if you enable ADS field of view, then this will be relative to whatever field of view you've set up here, making aiming much more consistent between hipfire and ADSing. Brightness you can obviously adjust depending on your preferences. I personally absolutely hate motion blur, chromatic aberration and vignette, which is why I turn all of these off. And with that, let's get into the main part of today's video, which is discussing each and every graphical preset. Starting off with texture quality, which I'm pretty certain is currently not correctly implemented in Battlefield 2042. Now, even after restarting the game, whenever increasing this setting, I wasn't able to tell any discernible difference in between the visual fidelity of textures when increasing this option from low to medium and high. On the other hand, textures that were very close to the subject actually were slightly higher resolved on the Ultra preset. However, for faraway textures, this essentially looked exactly identical to the low preset. Moreover, when performing my benchmark runs, I also wasn't able to tell any measurable difference in performance between low, medium, high and ultra. So hopefully DICE is going to be able to come out with a patch regarding this setting, because I do really think that the low, medium and high settings are all basically high, making it extremely hard for people with GPUs that don't have a lot of VRAM to actually play BF2042 with good performance even at the low setting, because it uses up exactly the same amount of VRAM as high and ultra. On the other hand, for people with more beefy systems, I would recommend to leave this on ultra. In terms of texture filtering, once again I wasn't able to tell any discernible difference in performance when increasing this option from low to ultra. I'm aware that it tells me that I should restart the game, which I actually did, but still no performance difference were measured. On the other hand, you can see quite an obvious difference in increasing this option, especially for textures viewed at an angle. For instance, in this comparison, you can see that the lines on the street become just much sharper with increased texture filtering, which I would always recommend to have at a higher level because it really doesn't affect performance in modern games anymore. Note that if you want to go through the comparison screenshots yourselves, then you can do so on my blog techguides.yt, the link will be in the card right now. Lighting quality, interestingly, not only affects light and shadows, as it says in the description, but also anti-aliasing. Now, in this comparison, the only thing that I changed was increasing lighting quality from low to medium. And as you can see, you'll get so much more aliasing and pixelation, especially along the curb, when setting lighting quality to low. Here's a side-by-side -side comparison of the visual fidelity of shadows when increasing lighting quality from low to ultra. I think we can all agree that low shadows look absolutely horrible and because of the aliasing issue I would anyways not recommend anybody to use lighting quality low and while the shadows at ultra look super crisp and very nice, I'd argue that the 12% FPS penalty really isn't worth the increase in visual fidelity and therefore I would recommend to use medium for low range system and high for mid and high range systems. The next setting is shadow filtering, which essentially adds another softener filter on top of the shadows that are set by lighting quality. And here's a comparison for how this affects shadows at the low and ultra lighting quality preset. Performance wise, I didn't find any measurable impact, therefore you can enable or disable this depending on your preference. Me personally, I like to disable it because I don't like the softer shadows. FX quality, medium and low essentially produced the same performance, whereas both high and ultra gave me a roughly 7% FPS penalty. Personally, I wasn't able to discern any visual difference in terms of molotovs or muscle smokes and therefore I would recommend to just leave this on medium. Similarly, for post-processing quality, I didn't find any difference in terms of performance between low and medium and a roughly 9% FPS penalty on high and ultra. Post-processing primarily impacts reflective surfaces in that reflections are much more realistic beyond high. Now even though this looks super cool, I would argue that the 10% FPS penalty isn't worth the upgrade in visual fidelity. Mesh quality essentially affects the amount of polygons that the game can draw. So in this comparison shot, you can see for instance these wooden beams are more numerous after high and ultra, and you can also see a bunch more rocks on the shore on the ultra preset compared to high. In terms of performance, I'm seeing basically no difference between low and medium, a 2% drop on high and a 3% drop on ultra. But this is another one of these options that you can definitely set on low and you're not really lose anything, but I personally like to leave this on high. Terrain quality interestingly does have a measurable impact on performance on both the high and ultra preset. However, once again, I wasn't able to tell any difference in terms of the rocks, 
the terrain, the formations, just everything looked exactly the same even after restarting the game when increasing the setting from low to ultra. So because there is no visual improvement but a penalty in terms of performance, I would recommend to leave this on low. On the growth quality essentially affects the quality and number of grass and shrubs that are being drawn in your game as well as the distance until which you can see grass on the ground. Additionally, it seems like the high preset introduces shadows of the grass that is kind of close by as you can see in this comparison here and because this actually kind of looks pretty nice and because the performance penalty is only 2% I personally like to leave this on high. For anti-aliasing post-processing, once again, I wasn't able to tell any difference in terms of performance and when looking at a visual comparison, then it's also pretty hard to spot any differences. Maybe the edges are ever so slightly smoother with TAA high, um, but honestly, the difference is pretty much negligible, so you can select either of these two presets. On the other hand, ambient occlusion has both a significant impact on visual fidelity as well as on performance. SSAO introduces a 3% penalty, HBOA a 5% penalty and HBOA full a whopping 7%. A visual comparison reveals a stark difference in visual fidelity when increasing the setting as this will increase the amount of shadows between and around objects. Even though ambient occlusion actually does look pretty cool in BF2042 and even though there aren't really many instances where you'll probably not be able to spot a player because of ambient occlusion, I would still recommend to leave this disabled because of the hefty FPS penalty. Finally, the performance of high fidelity objects amount is identically between the low and medium preset, is reduced to 2% on high and 4% on ultra. Now, since this basically affects soldiers and vehicles, this wasn't so easy to actually uh, get a visual comparison of, but that's kind of the best trade-off between visual fidelity and performance, I would leave this on medium. I didn't test dynamic resolution scale in favor of DLSS. So for DLSS we have to look at a moving image, as DLSS looks essentially indistinguishable from the full resolution when looking at a scene without movement. As you can see, Ultra Performance produces extremely pixelated graphics, you can see it very clearly on the power lines, and moving objects have horrible fringing. The performance mode is ever so slightly better, but I would still not recommend it, also due to the pixelation and the fringing around moving objects. The balanced preset produces a much better image with almost no more pixelation and only slight fringing around the gun. Finally, the LSS quality looks basically indistinguishable from the real deal, however you should note that the performance of quality is actually worse than when having the LSS disabled. Finally, here's a comparison of both the performance and quality of the LSS. I once again picked out this frame here while actually panning across the scene so that you can see the horrible fringing to the left of the gun and the arm of the player and you can also see the very pixelated power lines in both ultra performance and performance. On the other hand, the balanced preset produces a very nice image and a performance boost of roughly 3%. Ray traced ambient occlusion introduces a whopping 32% FPS penalty into the game and therefore should be definitely avoided. For Nvidia Reflex Low Latency, once again I wasn't able to tell any difference in terms of performance that I got on my system. Now this is probably because I have a pretty beefy system and if I were to test this on a more low end system with maybe only a 2060 GPU in there, then probably I would see more of a difference, um, but generally speaking I would always recommend to leave Nvidia Reflex Low Latency unenabled and definitely not enabled and boost because this will always give you the highest possible performance in pretty much most systems. Similarly, I wasn't able to tell any measurable difference in performance when enabling or disabling future frame rendering, however with previous Battlefield titles you would always want to have future frame rendering disabled in order to get the best or least amount of input lag and therefore I would continue with this tradition and leave it disabled also for BF2042. Finally, I never have any tearing on my 240Hz monitor display and therefore don't need VSync. If you're interested in how to best set up the rest of your Battlefield 2042 settings such as your crosshair colors, uh, your different key binds and also your hot elements, then definitely check out this video that I already made on exactly these topics. Other than that, please support me by liking the video and subscribing to the channel. Thank you guys so much for watching, have a wonderful day and I'll see you guys in the next video.